I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, no defense. Um, defense reactions, yeah. <laughs> Fair and reasonable. Um. Howdy, and welcome to the wonderful world of Flesh and Blood, an upcoming fantasy-based TCG game in which you are the hero. Well, you and everybody else, pitting against each other in a fight to the end. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking to break down not, ex not only exactly what Flesh and Blood is, but also show you some of the ways you can play, uh, teach you some basic rules, and share some further learning resources with you as well, all in under just 15 minutes. So stay tuned, check it out if you're interested in getting into the game. If you haven't already, maybe consider chucking us a like and a subscribe over here too. I'd love to see you for more Flesh and Blood content in the future. The fundamental idea of Flesh and Blood is very simple. I am a hero. You are also a hero. We don't like each other very much, and we're going to fight each other by attacking and defending with the cards we've chosen to play in our decks. Unsurprisingly, as well-trained heroes, uh, we have equipped ourselves with weapons and armor of our choice to get a better chance against our enemies. So, let's start there. Let's look at a hero card. So, hero cards are the centerpiece of Flesh and Blood. With the game having you play as your chosen character and take all actions on their behalf, the little box at the bottom of these cards tells you a little bit more about the hero, including any talents, classes or types they may have, such as being a warrior, a wizard, or an illusionist. The hero types and talents will determine the playstyle of your deck, and which cards and weapons you'll be allowed to play. For example, Harmonize Kodachi here is a ninja weapon, meaning only ninjas will be allowed to use it. Our heroes come in two forms, young and old. Fundamentally, they're exactly the same, just used for different formats of the game. The only noticeable change is that often the starting life total is lower due to the format they're supposed to be used in. How much life you get to start with and how many cards you get to play with often depend on the hero you're playing, as each hero has their own intellect, starting life total, and unique ability. The number next to the blue symbol you see on the bottom left is your hero's intellect, the number of cards they start the game with, and redraw up to at the end of each of your turns. On the first turn of the game only, both players will refill at the end, but moving forward, you'll only do so at the end of your own turn. This is meant to replicate the feel of a fight. The more you do to defend yourself, the less able you are to attack your opponent back. And this first turn rule helps to balance which player starts the game. Intellect is, is not a hand size rule in the traditional way. If you can find a way to draw more cards than you have intellect, they're yours to keep until you use them. The number next to the green symbol is your starting life total. Whenever you take a hit, you'll lose life equal to the damage you took. From here, the goal should be fairly simple. Reduce the opposing hero's life total to zero in order to win the game. Much like intellect, your life total is not a limit. If you gain life above your starting life total, you're just extra healthy right now. Let's take a chance to look at equipment. Much like you'd see in films or video games, your hero is a trained, well-prepared individual, and so they can equip themselves with weapons, armor, and other items before the fight begins. In Flesh and Blood, these items are called equipment, and they're placed on the board at the very start of the game. Unlike other games, in Flesh and Blood you start at your strongest, fully armored, weapon ready, high life total, and you find yourself getting weaker and weaker as the fight continues. Some equipment is generic, and can be used by any hero you choose to play, and others are specialized to certain types of hero, offering you a powerful reward for choosing to play that class. For example, we can look at Harmonize Kodachi again. This is a ninja weapon, which means it can only be used by ninja heroes. Weapons can be one-handed or two-handed, for which you can see an indicator for in the box at the bottom of the card. Your hero, at least for now, always has two hands, so you can use two weapons if they're both one-handed. Similarly, most equipment will tell you where it belongs. They can be headpieces, chests, arms or legs and your hero will be able to wear one of each before the battle in the appropriate slot. The hero you choose alongside all of your equipment are not shuffled into your deck and start the game in play. 
and once the game begins, they cannot be changed at any time. So now that our hero is fully dressed and ready for battle, how do we play the game? Actions and resources. In order to play Flesh and Blood, we need to keep track of two important factors, actions and resources. Every player will always start their turn with one action available, commonly referred to as an action point. If a card has the word action in the small box you see at the bottom, it's going to require an action point for you to use. There's a number of ways to create additional action points in order to give yourself the ability to take extra actions. The most common one is Flesh and Blood's main keyword, go again. If a card you've played has go again in the text box, it's essentially shorthand for when this resolves, gain one action point. Go again allows for strategies that want to focus on many small actions to exist, in comparison to some other heroes who will just take one big action instead. You'll also need resources to play your cards. Normally, you can tell how many resources are required by looking at the number in the top right hand corner of the card. Some actions on cards, such as weapons, will also require action points and resources to use. So how do we get resources? Well, your cards do that too. The value in the top left hand corner is a card's pitch value, represented by red dots. These are also helpfully colour coded at the top of the card. A red card pitches for one, a yellow for two, and a blue card for three. Whenever you pitch a card for resources, you can use those resources right up until the end of your turn. They don't suddenly go away after you play something. However, it is important to remember that you cannot pitch to make resources for no reason. You do have to pay for something. The order should go a little something like this. Announce the card you would like to play, pitch what you need to in order to generate the resources to pay the cost, this can be multiple cards if required, and then play the card you wish to play. Card types. Now that we have an idea of how playing a card works, let us take a look at some of the card types we can play. You'll find most cards have a pitch value, a cost to play them, and a total they can attack for or defend for in the four corners of the card. But not every card type can do everything, so let us take a look at the things that aren't heroes, equipment, or weapons. Action cards. Action cards are the most common type of card in Flesh and Blood, and they require an action point to play, and they need resources paid in order to use them. Action cards are often going to be used to attack your opponent, but have several other abilities as well, such as strengthening your attacks, drawing more cards, or granting bonus effects to attacks. They can be pitched and can be defended with for no cost. Attack Reactions Attack reactions can only be played in the attack reaction step. We'll get to that in just a little bit. They can also be pitched or used to defend, and if you'd like to play them, do require a resource cost to be paid. Importantly, however, reactions are not actions, and therefore do not require an action point to play. Defense reactions. The defensive counterpart to an attack reaction, these can only be played in the defense reaction step. Much like attack reactions, they can be pitched and do not require an action point, however defense reactions are the only card in the game you'll need to pay a resource cost for in order to defend with them. They're usually very strong and give powerful effects as a bonus in order to make up for this. Instance. The most flexible card type, instance can be played whenever you have priority, at any time assuming you have the resources. They also don't require an action point. In exchange for this flexibility, they often can't attack or defend for you. Like many other games, Flesh and Blood is constantly releasing new cards, and new card types will come with that, meaning no doubt this list will expand over time. So now we have a good idea of what cards look like and how to use them, let's take a look at the average turn of Flesh and Blood, and the central mechanic of the whole game, the combat chain. The combat chain is supposed to embody the back and forth of our heroic battle, the combat chain will open whenever an active player plays a card that is attacking. The defending player will then be offered a chance to defend, and each player will then get a window to respond to the choices of the other player that may affect the outcome of this attack. These are called the attack reaction and the defense reaction step. Each attack we play will create a link in the combat chain, and for each of these links, the following steps will happen in this order. Attack. The active player pitches resources to attack with an action card or their weapon. 
Defend. The defending player can use cards in their hand or their equipment to block the attack. Any card that has a printed defense value can be used to defend and it does not cost resources to defend with any cards in this step. You may block with as many cards as you like, but do keep in mind that every card you defend with will be one less card you have to attack with during your own turns. Reactions. At this point, only attack reactions, defense reactions and instants can be played. The active player will always get the first opportunity to act, paying resources for any attack reactions or instant cards they may wish to play. After this, we'll go to defense reactions. The defending player will now have the opportunity to use any instance or defense reactions they wish to play, paying any resource costs that may be required. If either player chooses to make a play during the reaction step, the opposing player will get another opportunity to react once again. For example, if I play a defense reaction to your attack, you'll have a chance to play more attack reactions with that information before we continue. And if you did, I would get a chance to play more defense reactions in a similar way. The chain link will only continue when both players have no further actions. Damage. The defending player only prevents the amount of damage they've defended for. Any additional damage will hit the hero. A hit of any amount of damage counts as a hit for any effects that may care about that, such as Dorinthria, Iron Song. At this point, the active player may choose to close the chain or keep it open for additional links if they have more attacks, action points and resources. When the chain is closed, all cards on the chain go to the graveyard. While the chain remains open, all cards placed onto the chain will stay in their respective chain links until that chain has been closed. This does include equipment. It's not uncommon for many chains to contain several chain links, but if you have an action point left over, you can close a chain and then start a new one if you wish. Once all chains and chain links have concluded, the active player moves to the end of the turn. There are hundreds of different decisions to be made on the combat chain. One of the many reasons Flesh and Blood appeals to competitively minded players should you use your card to attack, block, or make resources? It's easy to see why every decision counts when you only have finite resources under pressure from an attacking enemy. We then move to the end of turn and arsenal phase. During the end phase, you have the important choice to arsenal a card if you have any left over. The arsenal is a zone directly behind your hero and it can contain exactly one card to save for later. If you'd like to arsenal a card, you'll at this time place it face down in this zone. Arsenaled cards can only be played, never pitched or blocked with, apart from defense reactions, which block when being played. So make sure you only put a card here if you can see yourself playing it, or you might struggle to get it back out to make room for a more important card later. Your pitch cards are now placed on the bottom of your deck in any order. In several formats, you may very well see these cards again, so be mindful of the order you return them in, you may wish to see certain cards together later on. Draw up to your hand size and move to the opposing turn. Unlike other card games, running out of cards in deck will not cause you to lose a game of flesh and blood. Instead, you must desperately scrap to survive with what little resources you have remaining right up until one player's life total hits zero. So now we have a concrete idea of what a game of flesh and blood looks like, let's take a moment to look at some of the most popular formats to play. The deck you play in flesh and blood will depend on how you'd like to play the game. There's a variety of draft and sealed formats where you'll have to build a deck just from the packs that you open. Formats like commoner only allow you to play with the lowest rarity cards. There's even a multiplayer format called ultimate pit fight that allows four players to engage in combat at the same time. For today, however, we'll look briefly at the two most popular constructed formats, Blitz and Classic Constructed. If you'd like more details on these other formats, however, you can of course check out the Flesh and Blood website for all the details. Blitz is the fastest format. It's designed for casual play on a weekly basis at your local game store. It makes use of the young heroes with lower starting life totals. Your deck will include exactly 40 cards. That doesn't include equipment, just the deck. You may bring up to 11 equipment in addition to your deck. You'll equip your equipment after each player has revealed which hero they're playing so you can properly suit up for the specific fight ahead. You may have up to two copies of each different card in your deck. 
Cards are considered different if they have a different name, or the same name but a different pitch value. For example, you can have up to two copies of each different type of cold snap. Cards must be generic, or align with your heroes, types and talents. Games are expected to last for about 10 to 25 minutes. Classic Constructive plays very similarly to Blitz, with a few key differences. Your deck will be up to 80 cards, with a 60 card minimum. But your equipment will count towards this card limit this time. You are, however, still allowed to bring up to 11. You may run up to 3 copies of each different unique card in your deck, and games are expected to last for between 35 and 50 minutes. So how do you get into Flesh and Blood? Flesh and Blood is becoming more accessible than ever, with a variety of products serving as a great entry point as a place to play. Blitz decks. These are fresh, out of the box, pick me up and play pre-constructed decks for the Blitz format. They offer the cheapest way to play Flesh and Blood, and are great for getting started with your friends, with a new set coming out every single time a set releases, with a bunch of new heroes. These decks won't be winning you any tournaments anytime soon, but they can offer you important commons and rares at a very cheap, entry-friendly price. Classic Battles to Rintria vs Reinar, a product designed to include and introduce new players to the game, but with a slightly heftier price tag, Classic Battles offers two decks, telling you the story of Dorinthria vs Reinar, how the two came to blows, and allows you to create your own resolution to that conflict. It also contains a playmat, a lore book, and some nice foils and versions of cards that can't be found anywhere else. Talishar Online Flesh and Blood has a fan-made, free-to-play, online testing client. It takes a bit of time to get used to, but many of the world's best players use it as a playtesting tool, and it's easily the easiest way to get invested at no cost from the comfort of your own home. If you'd like a link to Talishar, it will be in the description box below. Flesh and Blood is becoming a juggernaut of the TCG play space, with compelling gameplay that offers lots of replayability. Once you combine this with a variety of different ways to play, and a deep lore full of characters that you not only want to play as, but also invest in and fight as, you can quickly see why so many TCG faithfuls have found the new game that they love to love. If you'd like to talk more about Flesh and Blood in the future, or you have any questions following this video, Feel free to drop me a line at Howling Minds on your preferred line of social media, and I'll hook you up as best I can. Until next time, I've been Howling Minds, you've been amazing, and hopefully I'll see you in the arena for some flesh and blood.